What up guys, Alex here, and in this video we'll be creating a realistic storm effect. Pretty cool, huh? I actually created this little clip for the intro of the behind the scenes video, which will be up on my YouTube channel very soon. It's a behind the scenes of the creative photo shoot that I did, and trust me, it's gonna be really cool, so definitely stay tuned for that. By the way, all the files that I'm using in this tutorial will be available for download, so if you want to follow along and practice with my files, then you can find the link in the description down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future uploads. Now let's jump into After Effects. So here's what we're gonna do. First, we'll add and animate the sky to make it more dramatic. Then using Luma key and masks, we will restore the detail of the background, add the lightning and change the exposure and the color of the sky so that it looks like the lightning is actually in the sky. Add the reflection from the lightning. Then we want to add the character, remove the green screen, blur the background. And the final steps would be compositing and color grading. Oh, and we can also add some exposure animation on top to make it look more realistic. As you can see, I have two clips on my timeline right now. One is a clean shot of the background and the other one is the character on the portable green screen. As I mentioned earlier, all the files I'm using in this tutorial will be linked in the description. I will start by importing the sky into the composition, adjusting the scale and everything until it looks right and then animating the position because it's a photograph. Don't go overboard with this, we want the sky to move just a little bit. Now we have to mask out the background and restore all this detail so let's duplicate our background layer and put it on top of the sky layer. Now I'll search for a luma key effect and change it to key out brighter. That way we can get rid of the bright areas and keep the dark ones if that makes sense. Our focus here is the trees, don't pay attention to anything else for now because we will deal with that in a second. By the way, I'm not really paying attention to how the edges look or anything because I know that I will blur the background later. However, if you're planning to keep the background in focus, then I recommend that you do this more carefully. Now let's duplicate the background layer again and this time we will focus on the rest of the background. Using the pen tool I will draw a mask around the water, feather it out just a little bit and then draw a second mask for the entire background. Let's work a little bit on the color of the sky. I will apply a curves layer to the sky and just play around with it until it matches the shot. Now we can go ahead and import the lightning clip, select and cut the frame that you want to use, scale and position it to where you want it to be in the shot and right away I will change the blending mode to color dodge. And right now it's affecting the background a little bit so what I will do is I will apply the curves effect again and just play around with it until it looks good. Next I'll search for a tritone, whatever it's pronounced effect, and here we can change the color of the lightning. I'm going for a yellow greenish color here because it matches the vibe I was going for, uh, I think. But you can go ahead and select any color you want. I will also apply an optical glow effect from Red Giant, but if you don't own this product then you can use an After Effects built-in glow. Moving on to the next step, now we want to make the sky match with the lightning, if that makes sense. So we want to brighten it up in the places where the lightning strikes. Let's create an adjustment layer on top of the sky layer and apply the levels effect. Here we want to brighten it up a lot and just get as much detail as possible. I know it looks kind of weird, but trust me, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> I will also change the blending mode to the lighter color. Now let's go ahead and draw a rough mask around the lightning using the pen tool. I will then feather the mask out a lot so that the edges are properly blended and I will also change the mask expansion settings to expand the area. When you're done with that it's time to animate the mask so just click on the watch looking thingy and going back and forth animate your mask to match the lightning. After that we want to animate the opacity of the layer to kind of make the sky alive. And before we start with that I would just like to mention that the effect will turn out more realistic if you make it sort of flicker. And by the way I will be using this technique again later in the video and I definitely recommend that you do it as well. So what I'm doing here is I'm playing with the opacity setting and randomly increasing or decreasing it to make it look like the light actually flickers. For example I'm setting a keyframe then moving to the next frame, lowering the opacity a little bit, then moving on to the next frame and increasing the opacity again. 
Now let's add some color to the sky to make it light up whenever the lightning strikes. We'll do that by creating a new adjustment layer, then let's search for a tritone effect and here you just want to adjust the color until it matches the color of the lightning. It doesn't have to be precise and in this case you actually don't have to be afraid to go overboard so feel free to play around with the color. I'll also add a curves effect and intensify the color even more. Cool, now using the bend tool create a rough mask around the lightning. And here we will do the exact same thing as we did with the previous layer where we were working with the levels effect. We will feather the mask out, expand it, animate the mask path and finally animate the opacity. If you want you can even try to copy and paste the settings from the other layer but I personally prefer just doing everything manually so that I have more variation. Okay, I really like how it's turning out so far, but now we have to make it look even more realistic. So let's duplicate the lightning layer and drag it on top. And here I will add a reflection effect from Red Giant. Now, if you don't have this product, feel free to use any other reflection effect that you might have. Or if you don't have anything at all, I would just duplicate the layer, flip it vertically and apply some blur and stuff. It should come out pretty similar in the end. And if you are using a reflection effect, then what I'm doing here is I'm reducing the source of opacity to zero to hide the original clip and turning off the clip to bounding box to see the entire effect. Position the reflection to where you want it to be on the screen and start working on blending it in. I just blurred it out and it looks really cool, however depending on your footage you might have to work on it a little bit more. Now let's create a new adjustment layer on top and this one is to change the color of the ground to blend in the reflection a little bit more. I will apply the curves effect and adjust the colors until it looks warmer. I will create a mask around the reflection, feather it out and animate the opacity but this time it's going to be very simple, we don't need to make it flicker so just a few keyframes will do. Now for the fun part, go ahead and pre-compose all the layers to have the whole background as only one layer and now you can import the clip with the character or if you already have the footage on the timeline then just turn it back on. As you can see we have a green screen here and this is exactly what we will need to take care of next. By the way, if you want me to do a tutorial on how to professionally remove the green screen, let me know in the comments down below. I'm just creating a rough mask around the character so that I only have the green in the shot and when I'm done with that I will go ahead and start the keying process. I'll be using a primate keyer from Red Giant to do this, but if you don't have it, then go ahead and use the built-in key light. Cool, now let's blur the background behind the character and since we already have all of our background layers pre-composed, we'll just apply the blur effect to this layer and it will blur the entire background. I'll be using a defocus effect from Sapphire, I don't know how to pronounce it but again. For those who don't have it, After Effects has a very cool alternative, Camera Lens Blur. I used to use it all the time before I found Sapphire but then I switched because the blur looks more realistic and it doesn't slow down the working process at all. Okay, it's time for one of the final steps, my personal favorite, compositing. But before that, let's just quickly do one more thing because the compositing process will slow down the rendering time and because my computer is so slow, I would just rather do it before compositing and color grading and keep this layer on top. Let's create an adjustment layer and apply the exposure effect and here we just want to make the light flicker for the whole shot and I'm only going to be increasing the exposure slightly. We'll just do the same thing as we did with the opacity before, increasing and decreasing the exposure randomly. Back to compositing and <laughs> again, I'll be using a super comp plugin from Red Giant to do this, but if you don't have it, then just make sure to color match everything and fix all the other problems that you might find until you're satisfied with the result. Maybe just take a moment to carefully look at your footage and ask yourself what is missing. In Supercomp, I'll honestly not do too much this time. I'll just add some optical glow to the background and color correct the character, add some light wraps and haze. Guys, Supercomp has literally changed the editing game for me and it's like really worth it, so... Yeah. And there you go, we're pretty much done with this effect, just add some color grading, add some 
cool sound effects, film grain, and any other stuff, and you should be able to achieve something like this. Alright guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you have any questions, then do feel free to ask me in the comments down below. And if you liked this video, if it was helpful, uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, and turn on the notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!